All right, welcome everyone. Welcome back to another Guildhouse game stream. Tonight, Sean and I are going to be playing the uh, Death Pirate against the Sixth Blade. Um, so, Sean, if you want, you want to just describe your character, let everyone know who you're playing, say hello, um, and then I'll get set up here. Yeah, perfect. So, um, for those of you guys who don't know me, the voice that you're hearing, the static bass on the bottom, that's my name, Sean. Um, I'm going to be playing the Death Pirate, uh, Death Pirate Rose, uh, specifically for Varia. The Death Pirate is one of our uh, Charisma classes. Um, the Death Pirate utilizes mobility as, as a main type feel for that. To do this, you're going to see a lot of uh, the mechanic engage and disengage, uh, and I'm going to hopefully force a lot of engage and disengage as well. Uh, the, the idea behind this Death Pirate, one of the things when we were building it, is we really wanted to go and get a dance to make it feel like you were dancing. Um, so yeah, hopefully it comes with that, and uh, hopefully uh, I kick ass butt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean's looking for payback for last time, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I think it's happening. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, Ant, you good to go? Yeah, yeah. So my character, uh, I'm playing, it's called the Sixth Blade. Um, so most of our decks, they're all based on some form of a class. Right, we have Cosmic Mage, Volcanic Warrior, Divine Paladin. Right, Sean is playing a Death Pirate. Uh, the Sixth Blade is unique in that it's one of our um, lore-based classes. In that, um, it ties into our uh, our game's lore, the story behind the game, if you will. So, uh, in the Varya universe, there's this character named Miyamune, and uh, he fashions blades. He's a swordsmith, and uh, he's an expert swordsmith. And he's actually so good that he doesn't trust any human or mortal to use his blades properly. And so what he does to complement every sword that he creates is he also creates this autonomous uh, golem, this artificial creature uh, that is perfectly suited to wield uh, his blades. And so that's what I'm going to be playing tonight is the sixth of these Miyamune blades. There's many of them out there. I'm playing the sixth one. So uh, with that, Sean, I think we're, we're good to go. We can draw our six and uh, roll to see who goes first. I got three. You have a three? I have no idea. I can't <laughs> It went, on, it went under my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to hit my I did, and I got a six. Okay, so I'm going to go first. All right, all right. And if you guys, uh, I'm, I'm trying desperately to get Sean and my vocal levels to be the same. So if you can let me know in chat if one of us is louder than the other one, that would be awesome because then I can adjust over here. I just enjoy screaming at the microphone. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's all that really is. <laughs> Okay, um, okay. What do I want to do here? Start us off. Um, all so, right. I'm going to engage, disengage. I'm going to start engaged. Okay. And I'm going to open up with You know what? I'm going to just use my sword. And that's it. Say pass. All right. Let's go and I will just use my sword. I'll Excellent. Pass. Okay. So I am not going to play anything fast and I will say pass. All right. I will. I will play my equipment over here, the Dread Chef, Captain Shapu. And then I'll say pass. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, pass again. All right. Uh, pass here, so let's go to resolution on this one. Um, Ant, you okay over there? Yes. Sorry. Just type in the chat. I was just asking him. <laughs> Making sure that everyone can hear you okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, we can go ahead. We can go ahead and roll. Oh, uh, so you know what? I'm impaired. impaired. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So the pirate does this thing uh, where she imparts... Um, it's called impaired. It's kind of a, a keyword uh, that she forces upon us, the opponent. And so really what it does 
is uh, every time that I roll dice, I end up having to roll twice and then take the lower result or the worse result. Um, so you can expect uh, Sean to do that often because he has this item, the chapeau, that lets him do it over and over and over again. Um, and ultimately the idea is it just it makes uh, fighting the pirate slightly more difficult than uh, any of the other classes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to roll two here, um, but not in a good way, uh, in a bad way. And see, I got a one. Ugh, okay, not great, not great. And a two. Okay. So what did you end up with? I have a three, so I have a total of four that I'm hitting for. Four, and I'm also doing four, so it's a wash. Nothing happens. Beautiful. Cool. All right, toss these off. Pork it up. Thank you very much for letting us know uh, that everything sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, Sean, you're an active player. Ooh, okay. Um, Give me one sec. I'm just checking what I can do here probably so i'm gonna start i'm thinking engage with you as well okay um and then i'm gonna go uh let's see i think i'm gonna open up strong uh so i'm gonna oh go boy. and do a twin strokes i'll drop the okay twin strokes over here um and then i'll do a luck drinker to follow up with this All right, go ahead. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Hmm. So we got physical, physical. Okay, so one of the things that's unique about my item, so the sixth blade of Miyamune. So one thing that makes it unique is that it's a 30 gold item. So it takes up my entire uh, gold value for, for the deck right because every, every deck has a, a total value of 30 split among a lot of their items uh, i have one item that's just awesome <laughs> um, and really what it does is uh, any time that i'm performing blocks so when i play a bunch of blocks onto the timeline um, the second one that i perform each turn will be treated as if it were an attack instead so the six blade is themed to be a defensive fighter who literally uses their blocks as an offensive. And so what I'm thinking is that I might want to try to do that now. Um, uh, real quick, Ant, before we go into that, uh, we have a question on from Blue Counterspell. Uh, can we zoom in on the battlefield? Can we zoom in on the bat? Um, I can try to do that. Can make the timeline a little bit bigger? I can. I can try to do that. The only issue is you guys would lose my hand. So if you don't mind seeing my hand, I can totally do that. Um, let's give it a shot here. I'll zoom in. Because you, you can't see Sean's hand, so. Whoops. Um, let's see, Sean, you want to just keep talking about some other things that have to do with the pirate, maybe what you're thinking on this play and I'll get this set up for everybody. Sure. Sure. So what happens on this play is I have in my, in the, uh, on the timeline on the third moment there, the luck drinker, the luck drinker is a specific, unfortunately I can't make it zoomed in for you yet. Cause Ant's trying to get it all zoomed in for you guys right now, but, um, it, to start a moment, your target engages you. If your target rolled two or more power die this turn, uh, this action gets plus three, plus three until end of moment. Currently, what's going to end up happening here is that um, I have two twin strokes that are going up against there. Uh, and hopefully, what ends up happening is I can go and get a response from Ant out of one or both. Then what ends up happening is I have that chapeau that I said I'm going to keep going and using as much as I can. Uh, it imports impaired, right? And if Ant replies to one and or the other of these twin strokes, I will likely just drop the chapeau right on to whatever it is to make sure that I, I get the luck drinker to proc. 
Um, however, if for some reason I do not have that ability um, and Ant decides he's not going to drop anything in either of these front two moments, um, I'm just going to let the dice roll because what ends up happening here is then he's only he's going to take just whatever the hit is on the first two and then on the third one um i, I i'm okay with if it's just a a small bash between the two of us right so okay cool so let's just go for it um all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh sublimate first then i'm going to bulwark and then I will uh, mirrors edge here okay um, and I'll say pass right so what I'm going to do here it's going to be interesting um so ant is going to roll the the two uh dice on this i don't really need to do anything about that um the, the thing i'm thinking right now is if i go and i'll drop in uh, a different play um i'll drop in red coat's revenge uh, this is the ultimate i guess you'd call it uh for the death pirate and what happens is I'll be able to go and summon the Redemption uh, with X amount of shot counters on it, where X is equal to the number of power dice that my opponent has rolled this turn. Um, what happens is you'll notice on this turn that he'll be have rolled three different power dice. So I'm not going to get the biggest thing out of here, um, but at least what ends up happening is I'll, I'll mark some damage on him, it looks like. Okay. This is, okay, this is super interesting. So you're giving me your boat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. But yeah. So yeah we're, I'm just gonna. You know what? You can have a boat too. We'll, we'll have okay. A, I've we'll okay. So so this is Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> style shootouts on the high seas. Yeah. Oh, All right. But anyway, yeah. God. That's that's what's gonna happen. All right. So really, what's happening here? So Sean has a. Uh, try to zoom in for you guys. He has a twin strokes that he's played. Uh, what, ha what happens is twin strokes down here for you. Yeah, got it. When, when he played it, it created a copy. Um, and so that's the token that you're seeing there. Uh, the next thing that he played was a luck drinker. And so uh, what luck drinker does is it forces the target to engage you, right? And then um, if they rolled two or more power die over the turn, it gets a buff. So it gets turned on, right? Um, so Sean's thought was I'm going to go and play two twin strokes because I will most likely have to respond to that by playing cards that roll power die. And uh, then that'll turn on his luck drinker. So then what he finally did, right, that kind of threw me for a loop, is uh, that he's combining this uh, luck drinker with a Redcoat's Revenge. And what Red, Redcoat's Revenge does is it summons the Redemption. It summons a pirate ship with shot counters on it uh, equal to the number of power die enemies have rolled, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is the Redemption. It's a pirate ship. It's a ghost ship, right? And uh, it sits on the battlefield. And any time uh, I move, so if I engage or disengage, uh, this ship is going to shoot me for a d6 worth of damage uh what's really bizarre here is that um i played a card called mirror's edge which if my target is attacking me sean is attacking me um i can have my mirror's edge become a copy of whatever he's doing uh so i'm going to end up not only getting a copy of L L luck drinker excuse me but his boat as well the redcoat's revenge which has <laughs> has never happened before, and I'm kind of curious to see how that works. But uh, let's, I got one more we'll, trick up my sleeve. We're not going to resolve yet. Oh, I'm oh okay, okay. Pass. I'm I'm not doing anything else. Okay. I'm going to say pass. So the last thing I can do here, just to get a little bit of an edge on this one, I, I still can give you my boat. But what I can do is I can take my chapeau and I can forget one of my own actions because it's a quick action here mm -hmm. um i'm not gonna be able to mark any damage on this bulwark that ant has over here this six zero right because i just even if i roll a six i'm basically only going to guarantee a one um so the chances of me 
getting that are, are minimal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is instead, I'm gonna go and forget my action that I planned here using a the other way you can ha handle uh, quick actions, uh, fast actions, is that you can forget something and, and use it as a in reply to. And I'm gonna go and just play um, essentially this Dread Chapu's, um, Dread Captain Chapu's uh, uh, hat essentially to go and allow me to go and get impaired on, on Ant's at action. What this does is Ant will then have uh, one dice rolled in the first moment, two dice rolled in the second moment, and then one dice rolled in the third moment. So four versus I will have um, one dice rolled in my first moment, no dice rolled in my second moment, and one dice rolled in my third moment, meaning that he'll get mm. two on that. So my boat so, won't be as good. Yeah, your boat's not as good, but it's still you still got a boat. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm good to go if you're good to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't do any more tricks. That's that's it for me. All right. So again, for those of you who don't uh, remember, or, or if you're new to the stream, um, whenever an attack faces a block, you roll both uh, power and focus. And uh, the attacker's focus has to be higher than or equal to the defender's. So my total, I have a base four, uh, and I just rolled a one, so I have a five total. And Sean, what do you have? I have a four total. He has a four total, so that would mean yeah. that his attack misses and uh, no yeah. damage is dealt. So we'll move on to this second moment here. I'm impaired. Uh, I think what Sean might have forgotten was that due to my blade, uh, this bulwark is actually an attack. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to pound I'm him in the, the in the face uh, with yeah. my shield. And so that'll be nice and fun. I, I did. I did forget that. And, um, yeah. Okay, so I got a six and a four. So I'm going to deal four plus six is ten. So, Sean, take yeah. ten to the face. Ow. It hurt. But uh, at least my hat stole my head. Um, all right, and then let's go to this last one here. So, uh, start a moment. Um, you engage me, which you already are. Right. Uh, you did roll uh, two or more dice, so I get plus three, plus three until end of moment. Correct. And now you're a thing. Right. And so, another crucial um, thing that's happening here is that Sean was the active player. Uh, so, if you notice, we have Luck Drinker here has a start of moment effect, as does my Mirror Blade. Right. Since Sean is active player, his start of moment effect will go off first before mine will. So he'll get his bonus of plus three plus three. And then my effect will go off where I will copy him. And so I will also get his bonus because I will copy exactly the state of his card. So I'm also dealing with a six six uh, that that gets me a pirate ship at the end of here. Come on, Nelly. All right. Okay, so I rolled a three, you rolled a four, so I'll take one. Yeah. And yep. then, and most then... importantly, uh, end of mm -hmm. moment, you will gain a pirate ship. I will gain a pirate keep... ship. And I have four shot counters, and you have two. Correct. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so normally what I like to do, and... You're, you're, you're taking a different approach, but I like to put the entire D6 on the boat because every time you shoot it, uh, it's one D6 and you can just kind of fire them off like cannons. But <laughs> that's just me. I'm kind of a... <laughs> I'll, I'll my, throw it mine off the table and hopefully it just My nerdy tendencies. Here. But anyway, okay, so, uh, so that re resolves the end of the turn. We'll put our stuff in the discard. Man, that was bizarre. I, I'm like yeah, it was, really it was fun. curious. I, I just, just put two back out. Anyways, okay. Hands Next on. turn. All right. This is your go, sir. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to remain engaged with you. Okay. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to just use my blade, say pass. All right. Um, let's do a... Let's 
let's go and uh, drop in my board. Uh, the heirloom rapier. Okay. Come back around for everyone. Keep turning it for myself and then realizing we're good. I'll drop in the heirloom rapier and then I will uh, say pass. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, as a fast action, I'm going to play Way of the Blade. Okay. <laughs> and what Way of the Blade does is um, if my target is attacking me with a physical action, uh, then both this action and my target's action are treated as if they are unopposed. So they will go right past each other and deal full damage. Okay. Um, all right. I will go and drop on a wind shank. Okay. Get all lined up. And then I'll pass. I will also pass. All right, and then last but not least, I drop on. Oh boy. Yeah, it's getting big now. <laughs> uh, a drowning dirge. Let me put it down here for the group. There you go. Oh. Okay. It's actually dirge. at the beginning of this entire uh, stream. It was on on the bottom right. So, but uh, yeah, the drowning dirge basically al allows me to go and put impaired on on a action. But more critically, I'm going to try to get Ant to do some movement right now. Um, so whenever an enemy moves, I remove a shot counter from the Redemption, and then Redemption deals 1d6 damage to the enemy. Uh, if the Redemption has ever no shot counters on it, remove Redemption uh, from this game. So I'm going to try to go and get a hit on there, especially since I'm way of the blading straight through. I uh, should get that hit. Cool. All right. Um, good. Good to go. Okay, so since I've created a combo action, I'll get two dice, or two sets of dice here, as will Sean. Remember, you are impaired, sir. I am impaired, so I had a total the first time of seven and seven, okay? It's easy to remember. So I'll do this whole thing again and see if I got worse. I can't see the other one. What's under there? Yeah, it's seven total. You have seven oh. for the power and then three for the focus, okay. but your focus doesn't matter. Focus doesn't matter. matter. My power is seven. Plus yeah, three for, is ten, so ten total. For the stream, the only reason why the focus doesn't matter is because it's an attack going into an attack, and we're basically auto-hitting each other because of the way right. of the blade. Exactly. So, cool. Uh, okay, so I have a total of nine hitting you with. Okay. Um, if your target rolled two or more, nope, that was at the start of moment, and we're good. Okay, so then you'll so take yeah. one. Ugh. I'll get hit. One. I will disengage. Wait, I'm not taking one. Wave the blade, my man. Oh, my gosh. I totally Dude, forgot. How much yeah, are you taking? You, ten. Whatever this was. You're this taking was ten. ten. Yeah, oh, I'm taking ten. Oh, my God, and I'm so taking I'm nine. Down and you take nine. All right, and all then, right, all right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, and Absolutely then you ridiculous. Okay. disengage from me. Right. So and... one way to, uh, just for you guys at home, one way to track engaging and disengaging is um, inside each deck, we gave you these little bifolds, and on the bifolds are full pieces of art uh, of your character, right? And so the an easy way to track, am I engaged or am I disengaged, right, is that you can simply use these sort of as like uh, character trackers or, or um, trackers for yourself. And so when Sean forces me to disengage here, I could do this to say, hey, mm -hmm. I'm now disengaged or I now have distance from Sean. Um, yeah. The reason we might want to do that on here on this simulator is because it's not very easy to manipulate the cards um, with point and click. But uh, my personal favorite way to do it uh, when I'm playing at home with the real cards at the table is I simply just take all my cards on the timeline and I slide them backwards. And so then it becomes very clear that uh, my plays are happening at a distance from my opponent. So that triggers both of us basically to have moved, which means we're going to roll 1d6. You have a boat too, don't forget. Well, actually, no, you only force me to move. So 
Um, okay. You shoot and I do not, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Well, well boat just went back. So go hand. ahead. You can you can shoot me in the face with your boat. Kapow! Come on, boat. Land some big money. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I took a shot to the face, and then I have to discard a card. Um, at random. Oh, it's at random. Flip those bad ones. One, two, three, oh, four, five. So here, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll just roll D6. Perfect. Four. So one, two. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Oof. Oof. Wow. Okay. Who designed that card? They should be fired. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Pretty sure I made that one. Okay. Um, so, Sean, I think you're an active player now. Yep. Let's do this. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to... So currently we are disengaged, right, from each other. Correct. Um, and this is going to kind of be problematic for me uh, just because of the way things are. If I say that I want to engage Ant, uh, that is a movement. So I'm not going to engage him. I'm going to stay disengaged. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do is... Yeah, I think the best thing for me to do is um, I try to charm ant. Get over here, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know what? I realize that's a fast action. You're not going to see that. I'm just going to be swinging my sword randomly. Totally randomly. For no <laughs> other reason. <I> swear. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. Peek behind the veil. <laughs> I don't know if that was just like a really good bluff or a just terrible <laughs> failure. Or like a total mind fart. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you're attacking me with your sword. One, three. So yep. I have a couple of options here. Um, okay. I'm going to, so I'm going to play this card. So this says, um, if I am the reactive player, which I am, uh, I can disrupt my target's action if it is physical. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. Ew, do not like that. Um, and so what disrupt means is that uh, Sean's action would uh, not happen. And so my, unless he's able to somehow uh, correct what he's done, um, my attack is going to just totally wipe his out and then uh, get through for some damage. Yeah, so unfortunately I can't correct um, what's going on here. So I don't want my, if I was to drop it, cough, cough, the charm to go away. So I'm going to just pass. Um, okay. Yeah. I also pass. So okay. go ahead and resolve. So start of moment. I'm a reactive yep. player, so I'm going to disrupt your action here. Yep. Um, yeah, you can do that. Usually I just turn it sideways, but that's Either fine. Or. It doesn't matter. Just some way of showing that it's no longer happening. And, and now I will roll, and Sean will take... Ugh, Goose egg. Of course. Sean will take four. No, Sean takes nothing. You're disengaged. We're disengaged, Ant. <laughs> oh my god no dude <laughs> you just swung in the midair no. uh, i was yeah all right go go ahead no. Ant. Here, here go oh failure yeah tonight both of our brains are seemingly not working yeah what am i doing okay my all turn right, go buddy my turn. all right so now i'm active player yeah i just blew choose? That's like one of my best cards. I just totally botched it like a scrub. Okay, do I want to engage or disengage? So so the answer to, well, while Ann is thinking about his term, Bloom Counterspells question, Disrupt would break a single attack lane. 
Um, so, uh, yes, basically what ends up happening is by tackling these are moments in time, in each one of these moments, right, um, you're basically breaking uh, whatever's going on on the other side, if that helps you blue counter spell. Okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm, like, shell-shocked a little bit. I can't believe I just did that. Well, do you want to stay engaged or disengaged? I would like to you... engage, be engaged. Yes. You moved, son. I know. Shoot me. Okay. Take that turd down. Come on, baby. No! Three only. Okay. Right. Um... Okay. So I'm going to sublimate and then brace myself and say pass. Okay. Um hmm. so brace my brace yourself is a giant block. It says I cannot engage or disengage in the moment, so I can't be moved. Um, and uh, sublimate is a just a 4-4 four, four block and so my thought process here is that I'm blocking twice so my sword will cause brace yourself to become an attack a giant 8 power attack and uh, I also cannot be moved in that moment so I'm hoping that Sean does not uh, have anything to otherwise push me away in the moment prior it's possible, but we'll see. Yeah, so I am going to... Uh, I don't. Aunt. You're, you're lucky there, my friend. Um, I'm going to go and drop an Arcane Blast. Um, arcane Blast says it takes essentially two moments. The plan will occupy the second of those two moments. Let me turn this around for the team. And then what happens is uh, I cannot plan actions in the leading moment on hit my target disengages from me but if you'll note ants brace yourself is legitimately cannot be disengaged or, or cannot engage or disengage this moment so he wouldn't be able to be moved but it's still an eight power with four so we're both basically attacking each other for eight at this point okay go ahead okay so i will um play a force blister here Let's say pass okay I will play a wind shank here and pass okay I will play a force blister here replacing this Ooh. and say pass okay and so if for those of you watching, the reason that I did that um, is because if I would have left this as is, I would have had a sublimate for three. Uh, brace yourself. Oh, wait a minute. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, never mind. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my math was off. T tonight's our brains are off. It's my brain like is killing yeah, I saw some... nothing. My, my math is so bad right now. I don't understand what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just going to pass for, there. That's fine. The, for so the so just, just Twitch... so you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys kind of can track what the hell I was thinking. Um, I thought by playing this card that I went over 10 for. Three in the first one. And then. I thought I, it? I thought this put me at 11 is what I yeah. thought. And so. I was going to play my second one here to replace this uh, sublimate to bring me down to two and eight so that I would have 10 total. Yes, blue counterspell, 10 is the max that you can spend in a turn. If you go over 10, then uh, what happens is you're actually unable to perform the action and it goes on delay until the next turn. So... I originally thought that I was going to push myself over, and so that's why I was kind of moving my actions around in that way. Um, but I did some really terrible math, and that wasn't true. And what's really embarrassing 
is that my dad is out there watching right now and uh he knows that i'm usually really good at math i feel really oh. stupid and he's probably never gonna let me live this one down <laughs> i i kind of hope now that your your dad uh <clears throat> aunt's dad uh mr mr Tessator, oh, go ahead and comment God. if you if you agree with that anytime um, um like... anyway i'm gonna just drop in the shapoo right as the end here yeah yeah that makes total sense okay Okay, I'm not going to do anything else for risk I'm, risk of yeah. just failing on miser miser miserably. <laughs> That's fine. Let's let's go ahead and just do this thing. Let's get some ones. This is why you never tell people that know you th that you're streaming. <laughs> you just you just fail to mention it. Okay, so I'm impaired, Oop, right? Three. Yeah, so you're impaired. All right, so um, I had an... first moment basically for those who are watching, nothing happened here because this over here is a um, a block, and he didn't put anything there. While technically we roll for it, we're just skipping it up, skipping to keep time going faster. Okay, so, so what do you got? So I got a seven uh, total plus Ten, eight. Eighteen. Yeah. Right. And then I'll get fourteen. Uh, 17 I have. All Ooh. right, so you take one. Take one. All right. Got it. <laughs> nope, sorry. I started going ahead of you. Oh, no, that's okay. okay. I'm just going to put my stuff into discard. So my <laughs> my dad says hi to Porkadump. <laughs> he he did not uh in fact make fun of me yet i'm sure it's i'm sure it's coming god i'm just glad my, just i'm just glad my brother isn't here it's just so, so bad <laughs> yeah i was gonna say I'm, I'm pretty sure you just like doxed your dad there like <sighs> he gave away his his username no it's okay uh all right well anyway i drew um i'm going to stay engaged with you um got it oh uh, this is annoying though Because I really want to disengage, but I don't have the health really to do that. Yeah. See, why did you give me your boat? I don't understand. Stupid that boat, was... right? Yeah. That was so weird. And technically, technically, he docks himself because Porkadump said hi, Aunt's dad, and then he said hello, Porkadump. <laughs> so I didn't really do. I didn't tell everyone. Yeah. Okay. True um oh my god this is terrible okay yeah this this is Ugh. i'll do i'll do this i'm going to go and let's see one two three that's way too much i can't afford that can i no i can't afford that all right here's what i'm gonna do i'm i'm going to charm you and then i'm going to pray a little on the side here hence his prayer interesting yeah so for those of you guys on on the stream so that way you guys can see what's going on here um basically at nine i really don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this monstrosity that i've got going on here over here um and so what i want to do right now is potentially give ant a stack of charm which means that he can't deal or basically have any damage uh, dealt to him um, unless he loses all stacks of charm. But I want to go by and me. do that. Dealt by yes. me. Yeah, yeah. By you. So that way what ends up happening is I can go and uh, heal. Put a, put a heal on real quick. And this is the first time I think I've ever used the heal in this way. Usually I use the you know, redo a, a item that someone's destroyed. So I'm going to also so always... heal. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to pass. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just checking one thing here. Yep. I'm going to go and 
forget my heal and toss in an aimed edge. And I'm going to pass. Okay. I will pass. Okay. I'm going to drop a lightning conduit on here. What? I'm going to pass. Yeah, okay. I also pass. All right. So, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you go first. You're going to apply charm to me. Yes, I'm going to so apply some charm to you. Two charmed. Yep. Okay. And then you get to. End of moment, I will engage you, but we're already engaged. Yep. And then I get to pick, so I'm going to pick to heal. Right. So I get to roll 1d4. And I got a 4. Okay. You lucky bum. Okay. Okay. And then on the next moment, I can't pay for this. Um, so I'm going to push it off. Mm -hmm. It's going into the queue. And then Ant is sitting there dropping a force blister. Correct. Which does nothing. Which does nothing, yeah. Okay. All right. And do you remember you lose one stack of charmed? In each moment. Um, yep. In each moment, yep. So that's gone and that's gone. Boop, boop. All right. And then, Okay. Okay. Go ahead, I'll just put that there for you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, whoa, whoa. This is a Twitch stream, sir. <laughs> yeah. I can't play anything not fast, can I? Correct. But you still have an option, I think. I hope. I still have an option. I don't know. I, I know the deck. That's all I'm, I'm speculating on. All right. Let's see. So you're at five. No, six total. All right, so what Sean did there, this is actually really smart. So he, he essentially baited me. And so he put out his heel. He put out a charm. His charm made it so that I could not attack for the turn. Um, and he was making it seem like the reason he was charming me was to create an opportunity for himself to heal. So I also had the same card in my hand. So I figured, oh, all right, I'll also heal during this time, right? He then replaced his heal with a fast attack, which prompted me to play one of my fast blocks, right? Because charm does not prevent me from being on the defensive. Um, but then what he did was he comboed his uh, fast attack with a lightning conduit. Um, and what happened was his lightning conduit combined with his dagger ended up putting him over 10. So he could no longer afford to pay for it, right? And so since he could not pay for it, it went into the queue, okay? And so my block just did nothing because there was no attack there. So now the next turn rolls around, and technically I'm the active player, but since every turn always has one moment, 
his uh, action came out of the queue and went into this uh, first moment here. And his action says it's, if, if it's the first action planned in a moment, then only actions with fast can be planned in that moment. So he basically hijacked the first moment on my turn and, and is requiring me to only play fast things here, which really sucks <laughs> for me, for me. Uh, ruins my plan um, but that's okay uh, all right so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to play this here Ooh, okay then so for those uh this is deadly swing and so what deadly swing says is the action takes two moments to plan and will occupy the second of the two um so i'm not playing i'm not allowed to play anything here as sean has drawn the x right I have to play it in the second moment. Um, so, but that's okay <laughs> with me. I'm, I'm yeah. totally fine with that. Um, and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a strike and a strike. <laughs> and I'm going to say pass. And so the strikes are uh, three threes. Shura Hidori strikes and when uh, clashing with an attack um, if the attacks if the Shira Hidori strikes a uh, uh, focus is higher than the opposing attack then um, my damage can't be prevented it just goes straight through so essentially what I'm doing here is I am banking on Sean not killing me in the first moment and then uh, hopefully I'll, I'll take him out so, um, I'll go, I, I feel like I don't want to play safe, but at the same time, um, I do want to show off a mechanic, uh, because this is one of those things that's awesome. So I'm just going to go and I, I have six, uh, uh, action mm. points that I've used essentially on these first two lightning conduit and whatnot. And then that means I only have potentially up to, if I fully pay for this and assume that I'm going to go through with that, then I only have four remaining. Four remaining across all three of these, I'm not going to get far. I'll probably end up dying. Um, however, what I can do is I can backflip out of the way potentially, risk taking the 1d6 damage, um, and essentially not take any of these guys down here that are troublesome right now potentially we'll see what ant comes with fast actions but that is what i'm going to show I'm not going to do anything else yeah i pass okay um i'm going to pass as well we'll see okay. how this results um so i guess two of these technically again for those of you guys online um watching the stream I do rule focus, but since I'm unopposed, it's not going to matter too much. Dang. So I dealt nine damage total. But that isn't enough to kill Ant. Right. So he's still in this. And we go then to the next moment, the second moment here. Um, I have a startup moment there. It says disengage. I'm going to disengage, but immediately Ant's going to fire off a cannonball at me. Stupid cannibals I gave him. And it threw it off the table. It's a five. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Wow. That good. Okay. That good. <laughs> um, That's my then... lucky way to roll, by the way. Blue counterspell. Yeah. Yeah. Blue, blue, everyone, you can thank blue counterspell for that. Anytime that I need luck, I just throw my dice off the table. Because then they come back in the center. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, I like your dad. I'm just gonna say that right now. If you've been following the chat, it seems like uh, he's he's also written for me to make you pay. <laughs> ah, this is a close <laughs> anyway, one. All right, all right. Yeah. So right. so then technically, none of these are gonna hit. We can roll for them if you'd like to see this happen. Um, That's all right. But... So so these are all missing because of distance because Sean has disengaged and I'm I'm just gonna whiff. Yeah, he's swinging at air at this three point. times. Right. Oops, okay. Got into my hand the discard okay okay and this is saucy this is a high stakes game we got going on here all right next next round here we go uh i picked i drew already i'm gonna remain disengaged by the way right for this um and I will go and play uh, a luck drinker uh, here, and then a what's what four, four, five, six, seven, and a ooh 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 ooh. I'll do a. No, I'll, I'll, I'm going to call it there. Just a luck drinker. I'm going to try to force you to engage me. Interesting, 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 interesting. All right, I'm, I'm just, I'm going for it. Okay. So... I have a card in my hand called Testudo. And what Testudo does, it's a, it's a little bit of a mouthful, right? But it's a, it's a 10 0 giant, it's a giant block, right? Uh, it costs five. And it says, when I plan it, I can create a token that is a copy in the next available moment. And I can repeat this X additional times where X is equal to the highest tenacity requirement of cards in my discard pile, right? So what does all that mean, right? That's a mouthful. Really what it means is uh, in my, oops, in my discard, I have a tenacity value. My highest one is from Counter-Strike. It's a five. So when I play Testudo, I can create five additional copies if I want to, up to five. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this card and then I'm going to create five additional copies. Now, since Sean only created one moment in this turn, the other five copies will be in the queue. They'll be on delay and they will happen on later turns. But I've basically dug in my heels at this point and i'm saying for for the next several turns i am just blocking and uh, i'm gonna say pass okay um all right i will go and so i want to finishing at this turn if possible um so i'm just gonna go and drop in here uh the chapeau um i'm gonna pass over to ant real quick see if he's gonna do anything else pass Okay, and I'm going to drop a Skullduggery on here. Um, so Skullduggery basically uh, allows me to reduce the power and focus of this action to zero, but then I double the amount of... Oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it goes. Uh, double the amount of, of power and focus dice this action has until end of turn. That means that I have up to 12 damage potential showing. Um, I'm not really going to break through at all with just a Luck Drinker, um, and it's not going to proc with the, the luck drinker so maybe there's a shot of dealing one extra damage here um i really don't want to get to that second if possible the next turn so all right yep let's go for it all right so start of moment i will engage you uh so yep. go ahead and shoot me hopefully not for six okay, okay. so the well, ship <laughs> the ship killed you so the ship got me <laughs> 
Yeah. How 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 anticlimactic. <laughs> no, that was yeah. that was pretty cool. Um yeah. All right, so cool. death death by boat is uh, how this game ended. You sunk my battleship. All right. <laughs> Cheesy enough probably. Whoop, where'd they all go? Oh, I got them. They're right here. There you go. All right, let me get rid of all these tokens here or copies. Okay, so does anyone have any questions while we get set up for the second game? What if Ant hit? Okay, so Death by Boat. So Blue Counterspell says Death by Boat. Yay! Um, what if Ant hit? So Ant actually had a defensive uh, card there, right? So that wouldn't have landed realistically a hit against me. However, his equipment, if Ant, you can just break, break that big, on the next turn, if I let it go to the next turn, um, where are you going, Ant? Oh, you got it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I mean, I um, uh, so on his next turn, essentially, what ends up happening is read the second portion of this, and it says the second block you perform each turn is treated as if it were attacked instead. He could be hitting, blocking for the first moment for ten, hitting for ten. And then he would be trying to create a bunch of extra moments. But if I can't survive these second hits, essentially the, the pirate is a very pokey class, um, blue counter spell. And what ends up happening is I likely will be unable to keep up with him if he does big hits at 10. But I can potentially get small little digs in every now and then. Um, and those small little digs are realistically uh, what I was I was banking on. But if I have to keep up with him when he's hitting for 10, I'm, I'm going to have to start doing a lot more dodging, a lot more juking. Um, and I have the capability to do that. But then with that extra, um, with four health and his ship going on, I really don't want to do movement as much as possible. So that's your answer, buddy. Um, anyway. Okay. Oh, I got to get rid of this extra boat. You have two boats. There we go. Yeah gonna hide it underneath my other boat <laughs> all right good to go i'm just gonna put these over here second game of the night yes all right so i think i, w I went first last time right so you can go first this time okay um Let's go and drop in. Hmm. I'll drop in the. Um... Are you engaged or disengaged? Oh yes, engaged. Sorry, totally blanking right now. I'm thinking what I can do here. Yep. So let's engage, and I'm gonna drop in the rapier, and say pass. Okay. You know what we need, Ant, I think? I think we need, like, some background elevator music just to calm the mood for everyone, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm really thinking that's... that's... You guys want elevator music? Is that I what mean, they want? Is that what chat demands? I don't know if chat's demanding that, but uh, I would definitely love a little bit of... We don't need Just something. That. Yeah, nonsense. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think I'm just going to start things off with, like, a... With the, uh, you know what? Mm, I'll do a Shura Hadori strike. Um, say pass. I'm thinking something yo ho, yo ho, you know, Pirate's Life for me, uh, to Black Mamba 88. That's just terrible. saying. <laughs> just play All your right. cards. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to drop a, a Shapu. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I'll pass. All right. Yeah, I'm um, good. Okay. Where'd that go? There it is. All right, so basically what I would like to happen here is to have a focus higher than his. That's probably not going to happen uh, because of his Shapu. So I got a four and a four. So we'll roll this again. This time I got a three and I got another four. Okay. So my total focus is six. What is yours? And mine is six as well. 
So. Oh. Ah. Dang it. Higher. Higher. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm doing a total of seven damage. Oof. What do you have? Okay. Um, I'm only dealing four damage. Okay. So take three. Okay. There All we right. go. And then go ahead. Staying engaged, I'm assuming. Um, yes. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay engaged. Um, and so what I would like to do. Wait, let's see. Three. Um, so stream people uh, if ever by the way you have any questions or whatnot just drop it on stream just as black mamba blue counterspell porka dump uh, and tony traz are uh, are doing feel free to ask the same questions as we go along and i'll i'll just i'm stop ant or ant will stop me in the middle um, even as something like uh what kind of elevator music do pirates prefer i those are good questions and um help especially when there's no elevator music in the background ant <laughs> all right i'm going to less thinking oh my god i don't know i've i have some i have some pretty good ideas but i think i'm just gonna i think i'm just gonna poke with my sword one more time i'm gonna do that say pass mm -hmm. okay uh i will poke with i have such a good hand there are so many things that i can do a sword yeah okay I'll pass. i'm also gonna pass all right let's go for it all right so my sword base is just a it's a three three just a three yeah. three action um and mine is a three three as well but it gives impaired right so i got a four and a five and first I got time a... let's see I'm using my blue oh. counter spell move. Oh, I got a one. It failed me. <laughs> Terrible. All right, so I got a. I have a four total. Okay, and then I have a six total. All right, so I'll take two. Perfect. Okay. That impaired man. That impaired's rough, especially when you see a really, really good roll like I just did. I had <laughs> rolled a four and a five. Yeah, uh, had to redo it and ended up getting a one and a two, so that's rough. But good to go. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh um, boy, whoops! You didn't see that. <laughs> I, I actually didn't. I I, I missed it. So um, oh, good. Okay. I threw my card off the table. Hmm. I will right. do. What kind of phone calls do pirates make? Um, let's see. Probably R-rated ones. R-rated ones. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, these are terrible. Puns, uh, I'm, I'm like... here all day. Oh, porka dump booty calls. Oh, that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> that's way better. All oh, right, I'm funny. gonna drop. Um. Okay. This is, yeah. So there we go. Got Again, it, got for it, the got groups, it. that way no one, everyone can see. I am incapable of playing something because of the way this is set up. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm gonna do something really bizarre. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Dude. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right. Um. So I'm going to play this card called Shields Up, okay? And when Shields Up is planned, I get to create a token that's a copy. So I'm going to play Shields Up here. And so I'm going to create a copy here. And then I'm going to say 
pass. Okay. Um, do I want to? All right, I will drop my Shapu onto here. Go ahead, pass. Okay, so now I'm going to play Reflector Shield oh. here. And what Reflector Shield does is uh, magic damage that's prevented by it um, are dealt to my target. Mm -hmm. So this is rough, because I just went in all in on a big magic blast here. Correct. So um, I... I'm thinking it's time for a quick escape, and I think that my best plan would be to uh, replace all of this, right, with a jeering ploy. So this is forgotten, uh, the, the equipment comes back, and then jeering ploy. So basically, Ant has, because of his sword, a really big attack. And I need to get out of the way of this thing, because this thing is bad. Right. Okay. I will pass. Okay. I'll pass as well. Okay. So we go to this resolution step. Yep. Nothing happens Nothing here. Nothing happens there. Um, at the start of moment on this one, I'm going to disengage. Yep. And then... So I'll actually, get... this is a huge attack, but it will miss because it doesn't have ranged. Yep. And then at, it says my target engages me at the end. So there we go. Yep. Um, yeah, for everyone to see it. And then after that, we're going to go directly to the heirloom rapier. If your target rolled two or more power die this turn, this action gets plus two, plus zero until under moment. Remember that even though nothing has been happening here, um, yeah, this would... is, right. yeah, these are these are dice being rolled. I so technically I am... rolled all of these, but they were all misses, so I'm just kind of shorthanding and skipping that. Um, yeah. But yeah, go ahead. And boop, You'll only take... four, four damage total. Yep. Plus two, plus yeah. Whew. All right. Well, all that. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. My graffiti art. Why didn't we want to play cards with the pirate? Um. So I'm assuming that this is like a dad joke type thing. Uh, Black Mamba eighty eight. Um, normally I would say because it's they're cheating uh, or doing something with skullduggery but uh, I'm very bad at puns so I normally leave that, leave that up to my friends um, so why? because he was standing on the deck <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's bad uh, don't so... quit your day job Ma Black Mamba 88 we love you, thank you for supporting us it's so dead, it's so, it's it's, so, it's so bad it's good dad, I can tell it's so bad it's good um, i love it is this my turn or is this your turn no it's my turn okay um okay so i'm going to because he's standing on the deck one two three four five six seven eight nine 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 i'm just going to do another uh poke with my sword say pass okay um guess I'll just poke with my sword uh, on this one and uh, I'll say pass yeah pass okay I will also pass um, I'll just drop in the the chapeau okay pass okay yeah I'm I'm not doing anything else all right. I guess the team can see now the how just poking. That's that's basically all I can do. Ugh. Okay. I got a 
I got a one. I'm not going to re-roll this a second time yeah. because I have Doesn't a one. Matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, technically I'm impaired here, but uh, I can't get any worse than a one. So I have a four total. I take one damage. Okay. All right. Put wrong one of the numbers here. All right, perfect. My turn? Your turn. That is correct. Let's do this. Um, so I got a, I got a joke. Why should you pre-order the pirate deck? <laughs> Shameless plug. Because it's Why, for Aunt? sale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what this channel is all about. Ah, uh, beautiful. Anyway. Um. All right. Go I'm ahead. Drop, play your things. I'm gonna drop two of of these guys. Uh, the twin strokes, a heirloom rapier. Interesting, um, interesting, interesting. One, two, three, four, seven, seven. All right. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to play a. Interesting. What do I want to do here? I'm going to do an indomitable drive. Indomitable drive. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, here and here. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'll say pass. So, indomitable okay. drive is a block that the golem has. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 4, and it has start of moment engage. If you are the active player, uh, gets plus 3, plus 3. I'm not, um, but I'm more using it for the engagement. One, two. So go ahead. Yeah, I see. I'm going to go and drop the Chapeau on over here. Okay. Uh, and then I'll pass. I will force blister here. Okay. Say and pass. Then I will. I'm gonna drop the red coats revenge again. Mm. Right at the end here. Got it. And I'll say pass. Interesting. Okay. I also pass. All right. All right, so in this first moment, I have a block against your attack, so... Yep. Get my focus die out. Focus. Do, 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 do. I got a one, so you're definitely going to hit. Okay, I got a two, and I'm only hitting for three, and you're blocking for three, so four. So yep. you're good. Right. So I prevented all, right. all of that. In this, this next moment, me? my block will be treated as an attack. Correct. Okay. I got a seven. Oof, I get a five, so I'm going to take two. Yep. Okay. And on this last moment over here, it is a block again. Correct. Um, mine gets plus two, plus one, uh, zero because of the... Because um, I've rolled two power die this turn. Yes, because of the power die, yep. he is impaired. Um, and right. I only have a four, so I have a seven focus. I and a seven. You have a seven too? Seven power. Yep. Okay. And oh you have a seven power. Mm -hmm. And I have a six power. So no good there. Um however he did roll four dice this turn. Kaboom. Power chip. Correct. All right. Token. Blue Counterspell says because of the broadside. I don't yeah. know what that means. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I... I'm just going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give it to you, buddy. All right. Uh, your turn, Ant? Yes, my turn. Okay, 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 okay. 
Um, let's do. I'm going to just uh, poke with my sword, say pass. Okay. So we are engaged still. Um, Correct. I will... Poke with my sword and say pass. Yep, I pass. Okay, I'll I'll drop actually. I don't need that. I can just do. Mm hmm. Okay. The drowning dirge, and then pass. Uh yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh... Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a one. I'm not going to re-roll that because I rolled ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh, my God. That was a perfect. So everything was. Yeah, so I have a. I'm hitting, obviously, but I have a six and I have a seven total. Seven total. Um, and then on hit, target discard the card at random and then disengages. One, two, three, four. Um, okay, so one, just grab one out of my hand. Okay. Um. Why'd you take out four? Seven? Shouldn't you have taken off three only? Gain one Oh, off yep. Right. Yeah, I clicked one too many times. Cool. Man, an honest pirate. That's. that's I know, cool. right? It's rare. It's mm -hmm. rare. I'm gonna. We're, you're gonna be forced to disengage. All right, shoot me in the face with your. I'm gonna shoot you in the face. Stupid boat. <laughs> For four. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you're actually your active player. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Um, ah, dang it. <laughs> Flung it out of my hand again. So I guess I'll start engaged okay. with you. Um, I'm going to. First, do a <laughs> heirloom blade. So we'll Porta Dump says, "What does Miyamune mean?" So Miyamune is the is the um, name of mm -hmm. the individual who forged the blade. So this is the sixth blade of Miyamune. Miyamune is a swordsmith in our lore, and he forges these blades. He's made an an unknown number of them. Um, and the deck that I'm playing is the sixth uh, blade. Yeah. So I got three, six. All right. Perfect. Uh, this is my play right now. Got it. Go ahead. <clears throat> and we are engaged. We are engaged. Okay, so Sean is again using his uh, lightning conduit. He's trying to create this uh, moment where um, I cannot play anything fast, right? The way that I'm going to try to get around that is I'm going to play a twin strokes here, which when I plan it, uh, creates a token that's a copy in the next available moment. So it'll create a token in this moment, uh, thus circumventing uh, what he's trying to set up here. So I'll do that and I'll say pass. Okay. Um, what I will do is I will drop another Drowning Dirge right there. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll pass. Yeah, I, I'm going to pass as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass. All right, cool. Let's go to resolution on this one. There's a focus dice.
Remember, you're at disadvantage. Yep. Oh my god, rolling so well tonight. All right, Ty had a three was my lower. Okay. Uh, and then I have a six, so I have seven total. Um, and then you have five total, so you're gonna take two. Yep. Um, I'm gonna disengage. Then, yep. And then I shoot you for whatever shoot this me. is. This goes down. For four. Four. And then discard a card at random. Yep. I'll just grab one just again. Just grab one. Okay. Cool. All right. And yep. then second moment over here. All right. So now condo. we are yeah. disengaged, right? Correct. Um, so uh, Sean's attack here has ranged, which means that even though we have distance between us, um, his attack, if it uh, lands, it will still be able to deal damage. Versus my attack, it does not have ranged. Um, so I'm incapable of damaging him. I can only basically cut his lightning out of the air. That's the best that I can that I can hope for in this scenario. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what just happened? G G I will give you an opportunity to say I didn't see anything yet if you'd like to. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible. No, the the, I got a the one. Twitch streamers will know, but no, I, I'll pretend I not to. One. I got a one. That was the weirdest <laughs> thing ever. I got a six. All right, so I take so, three. Yeah, take three. <laughs> that was so that was, bizarre. I'm not even sure. That was like, funny. What are the physics? This this game. What are the physics behind that? Whatever. Okay. One of those was a copy. So. All right. Go ahead. Flip, flip. Okay. Is it my turn now? It's your turn. I'm the active player. Yep. Okay. So, um. Oh my god. So I am just gonna heal and say pass. I'm gonna stay disengaged. Okay. I'm gonna drop a luck drinker. Okay. And I'm gonna say pass. Um, I'm going to play shield up fast as a combo. This will go okay. into the queue since there's only one moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so also for the group out there on our Twitch stream, uh, the reason why that went into the queue is because you can only create moments in that first um, phase essentially as the active player so uh essentially this secondary thing was happening during the response phases the fast phases uh and this card when ant played it um thus can't create another moment uh, that that portion of the the turn has been done uh and i'll pass okay um i'll go and Drop a windshank on this. Yep. Okay. I'll pass. I will drop an aimed edge on this. Jesus. All right. I pass I... again. Yeah. Uh... I don't. I, I can't. Well. I I will do a skullduggery. Oh my god. Okay. I pass again. Okay. I'm <laughs> passing now. So, ready okay. to go to resolution? Yeah, I'm ready. So go ahead. Explain to everyone what you're doing. Okay. So I, first luck drinker goes, and first off, uh, we're looking for the start of moment actions. Uh, Ant doesn't have any start of moment action, or uh, any, any start of moment effects that are going to happen during this moment. Uh, I do. The first one says, my target engages me. Uh, if your target rolled two or more power die this turn, which he is not, right? It gets plus three, plus three until end of moment. Uh, I do not have any of that going on there. Then what happens is I have also, a, so uh, a secondary action over here, Skullduggery. Let me turn it around for you guys. It says, essentially, I get to reduce the power and, and focus of this action to zero. So all of these, these 
combined whenever you do a combo into one giant action. So all of this uh, uh, have a static. All these these um, actions have a static number at the top. Um, I'm going to reduce them all to zero, but I'm going to double the amount of, of dice that I'm going to get. Note that what happens here is on aimed edge, it's already a zero. So I'm just doubling the dice outright on those. The only one I'm losing here something on is luck drinker, which luck drinker is a three. So I'm doubling the amount of dice. So I'm tossing two dice for this. Um, and I'm hoping that second dice essentially lands on where it should be for average. Um, and yeah, it's it's going to be six dice. I'm going to roll for this In one. In layman's terms, Sean is a cheating no good pirate who is rolling six dice. <laughs> yeah. And I get one. <laughs> yeah, but Ant takes the, the pirate ship beforehand. Oh, which right. Which is five. I get shot by the ship. Oh, boy. And Ant does have, however, a... a <laughs> this um, is terrible. A block. I do have to roll... Can I just say I hit you? Because yeah, you you, you do. Because there's you no do, chance. It's even impossible. If you roll it. It's impossible for you to miss. Oh my god! So come I, on, uh, luck, oh, lucky six. I think that was a three. Oh, I got a six. A three. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm toast. Yeah, you're, you're toast. I'm just blown out of the water. Okay. Yeah. So it's ten. God. Seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> And that, viewers, is a rage quit. Oh, my God. Uh, that was uh, ridiculous. I just got obliterated. Okay. All right. Well, with that, yeah, I think we're now even two to two split. Um, yeah. Anyway, so do you guys have any questions, uh, comments? You want to – we're going to move over to Q&A now because uh, I'm, I'm just totally defeated. Good, good game, sir. Good game. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good game yourself. Um, yeah, no, but Q and A time. Um, how do you I'm trying to see? I'm, I'm checking the the chat right now to see if there's anything going on here. Uh, the sixth one is good for mincing garlic. The seventh one is good for chopping carrots. I don't understand what's going on there. Oh, they're um, talking about the blades. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, let's we'll gotcha. back up quick. So we'll go to that comment. So the, the blades are sweet, right? Yeah. Um, basically the idea is uh miyamune is a master swordsmith he makes all these different blades he doesn't trust uh mortal beings to wield them appropriately because he thinks his swords are just too perfect so what he does is he builds a autonomous golem uh, to perfectly complement and thus wield his blades so not only does he think he makes the most perfect swords, but he also thinks he makes the most perfect swords, men, woman, being, whatever, right? Um, to complement that blade. And so that's really what the sixth blade is. Uh, six implies that there are many more, which there are. So if you think about it, there's a whole bunch of golems running around. Uh, the multiverse and they're all wielding these like super powerful blades that all do these like really unique things um the next thing that we're seeing here is uh how do you infuriate a pirate and uh, you take away the p which yeah. makes them irate <laughs> which, that's hilarious i love all it. right um but anyway so are, are there any questions you guys is there anything that you guys wanted to to ask um discuss what, what, what do you got Oh, we got a long one here. Blue Counterspell says, since this is a real-time first-person style game, which it is a, the only uh, first-person, the original first-person card do game. You Thank you very much, Blue Counterspell. Uh, do you think that as the character, Six Blade, Death Pirate, Shadow Assassin, Volcanic Warrior, will allow Varia to be open to a campaign and or multiplayer style adventure beyond this current format in the future? similar to mtg edh slash dnd oh yeah uh, so the answer so, is yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah so so we um so just just to be blunt right when we were designing this game um we we purposefully did so in a way uh to make it uh configurable right and um, we did so with the idea of playing a pve style session in mind um, so every single one of these cards 
can represent some form of action that you could take in a role-playing setting. So if you wanted to go to your D&D night or your Pathfinder night or whatever, your role-play night, and uh, take, say, the Sixth Blade with you and say, I want to role-play this character, uh, you can do that. And a lot of your actions, a lot of your cards, right, they represent different things that uh, you could do as that character. And so if you wanted to go one step further and even try to enjoy, say, a leveling up style <laughs> of play, right, um, what you can do is you can look at the card's attributes. So uh, in the bottom right-hand corner of this card, Shirahidori Strike, you can see that there's an attribute requirement of one tenacity, right? Really what that means is you have to be level one uh, in the tenacity um, tree, so to speak. Right. Um, the decks that we're playing are out of the box, so we don't really check our attribute requirements that often unless a specific card asks you to, like the block that I played earlier, which kind of checked what my tenacity was. Right. But really, this um, lower right hand side of the card is um, what indicates the requirement that you need in order to keep that card in your deck. So uh, Redcoat's Revenge, if you notice, this card is bananas. Like, it always does something really awesome. Uh, it won the game for Sean the second time through, right? Um, but, but it has a super high requirement. It is a uh, level 7 charisma, right? So if he were to be role-playing a level 1 pirate, uh, he wouldn't get this for, for a while in, in, like, a PvE-style game, right? Uh, these decks are built to make it feel like you are a level 7 blade against a level 7 pirate. Or, you know, to, to Blue Counterspell's point, a level 7 volcanic warrior or shadow assassin. Like, each of our decks are built at that level. But there's nothing preventing you from uh, trying to be level 1 and using just, like, the base stuff as part of a role-playing campaign. Um, or mix and matching a lot of these cards together and making a level 20 character. Like, you can totally do that as well. Yeah, so so if I can piggyback on that, um, I, I'm going to speak for myself on this one. Um, my personal favorite style of gameplay, Blue Counter Spell, um, is, is essentially a multiplayer format because you always end up with many people uh, essentially having different outcomes um, also enjoying themselves and in those type of scenarios in those type of events um, that is what I think we have as as a strength for this um, this this system that we've built um, Varia has that as one of its cores um, and now going back to answer your question we built that uh, into here knowing full well that we wanted that because we enjoy that style as well. Um, and we believe that there will be some type of um, role-playing campaign allowable and that there is going to be a PVE element. Um, and we're kind of tipping our hat at that one, but yes, yes. And to Ant's point, um, the campaign can start at level one, it can start at level three, it can start, you know, wherever you want to agree to start at because you can agree where to start at and where to end at and you can go any which way shape or form um and and the cards are are scalable in that way um so yes very much so good yeah. question yep uh what else does anyone else have any other questions concerns comments dad do you want to make fun of me for sucking at math <laughs> Again, uh, uh, so, uh, someone's going to end up clipping that and putting it online, and then I'm never going to be able to get rid of it. Like, it's just going to be this clip of my dad saying, Sean, please beat Ant. He sucks at math. <laughs> I might have already clipped that for my personal records. Uh, just saying. God. <laughs> Gotta love the internet. Uh, All right. Cool. Well, with that, guys, thank you so much, guys, girls. Um, for coming out, uh, checking out the game, and uh, thanks for pre order. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, right. I always forget to do that. I'm such plug, a terrible plug, my man. I know I'm a terrible salesman. Um, so, yes, Varia is up for pre order right now. It is on our website, um, guildhousegamesllc.com. 
You can get uh, any of the decks uh, individually, or you can get all seven at a discount. Um, so if you really enjoyed seeing the pirate or the six blade and you want to play them, try them out for yourself. Uh, you know, you can get a pre-order now and then, and then we'll send it to you soon. Um, if you would love to see, uh, PVE or, um, some other form of class or character or anything like that, absolutely please reach out to us. Um, you can also do that through our website. We have a contact form. You can also reach out to us on Twitter through Twitter. email. Like we have a bunch of different ways you can contact us. Um, the reason I say that is because the inspiration for the sixth blade, the class that I just played, actually came from uh, one of our playtesters who we polled and we said, hey, what kind of character would you like to see? And uh, we got actually a couple of different people who said they wanted to be able to play as an androgynous golem. Yeah, it was, was exactly like, the words androgynous. Golem so that uh, we got, we loved the idea. We had multiple people saying that they were interested in it. So we made it right. Uh, the pirate is another great example. Uh, we had a play tester who um, basically made the comment of, you know what I would love to play as is a pirate. And immediately Sean said, we're making a pirate. <laughs> and we did it, you know? So, but my, my real point is that we, we love our community. We listen to you guys. Um, if there's something that you're really clamoring for or you want to experience, like we'll definitely consider making that uh, in the future. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. Blue counterspell pirate is OP. <laughs> Ugh, lies. <I> can't <laughs> Sorry. Lies. <laughs> but, uh, uh, anyway. anyway. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And uh, have a great night.